um, there's, you're going to start to have problems finding parts for those, uh, the, the older furnaces, the old hydro flames like that. Um, what we're finding is the manufacturer, Atwood, got bought up by Dometic. And so the machines and the presses and all these kinds of things that were used to make that flame spreader, to make those parts, to make that motor, they're destroying those machines to force the issue like, okay, we're not going to support this old $30, I mean, I mean, 30, 40 year old furnace anymore. Um, and I understand why they do that because that big heat exchanger that looks like a mitochondria inside the, uh, that's my background in biology, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody know what a mitochondria is and the endoplasmic reticulum? Anyway, so you got this mitochondria looking thing inside of your, your heat exchanger of your furnace. Um, those develop little micro cracks in them over time. And um, guess what happens when that happens? Now you get carbon monoxide coming in your RV. So I totally get why it's time just to orphan that whole product. I mean, if it's an 85, series furnace those came out in 1985 and they just kept going with them and that's why at the beginning of the series of, of the thing we said we don't need to know th that it's in a jayco that means no nothing to us we need to know okay you got an 85 31 furnace and if you're going to look for parts on that furnace you really need to know the serial number as well so we get the right electrode but anyway the point i wanted to make on that that furnace is it's a much older series furnace there's a billion of them out there but uh, they're starting to get harder and harder to find parts for those because they've destroyed the machines that make those parts um, to kind of let them get out of the you know, warehouses and then forcing you, not because they're greedy, be because they're trying to keep you safe. <laughs> These furnaces have been out forever and they want you to get a newer furnace to keep you going longer. So that's what's going on with having a hard time finding parts. The other thought I had was like, some of you have a stove or a range, okay? Uh, it's an oven down below. Okay. And uh, I don't remember the year. It seems like it was in the last 10 years or so, there were some laws that were changed. So um, some of the old manifolds in those stoves had, a, had some mercury in them that was allowing that, you, you know, you push in to get your pilot light lit and you light it and then you hold it for 30 seconds to let go. Well, there was, an, there was a component of mercury in that whole process. Okay. And a law was passed, basically, I'm gonna paraphrase, I don't know the exact law, but here's, here's the RV technician's version of this law. They passed a law that basically said, you, unless you have a license, you cannot transport mercury from one state to the other state unless you have all this documentation and paperwork. Well, guess what? Uh, so the manufacturers that was making these, uh, which was pretty much all of the oven manufacturers, um, no longer was that manifold allowed to be manufactured so they had to, and, and the reason I know this is because we were working on a Suburban or a, 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 a Magic Chef. Anyway, it was a stove and we determined that the, um, the manifold, the thing with all the knobs and everything had failed. Okay, we need a new one. Hey, let's get a new one. It's new, part number AB6YZ, no longer available. I'm like, what do you mean? This is a relatively new oven. And so I called the manufacturer. I'm like, how could this part not be available? And then that's basically what I told you is like, yeah, well, we ha they have to buy a whole new oven at that point because there's no parts available for it because of this mercury law. Um, so um, other instances where laws might change, uh, for example, in 94 on the LP side, if you look at your cylinders, um, uh, older cylinders, uh, even older regulators, um, the older cylinders, I, I'm going off on a rabbit trail, but anyway, there's these laws that changed on the LP the way that the service valve that goes into the cylinder changed. So the ones we should have today have three lobes on them with a tamper-proof screw. The ones from 94 older have a like a clover, like a bunch of little ears on it. It reminds me of those little butter cookies that had the little cloves on it. Um, and um, those are the ones with the, the put on left, right? P-O-L was the name of a company, but when I say P-O-L with the screws on it. So the service valves have changed. And, um, and not only that, the regulators have changed in the LP industry several times. Um, so as people blow up or burn up, <laughs> I'm making light of that, but as bad things happen, laws get changed. And, um, so to Trisha's question, like, well, what do you do in that situation? Sometimes your only option is to buy a whole new appliance, especially if like on a furnace, that's like maybe 30 or 40 years old, put it out to pasture, get a new one. Um, you're going to do yourself a favor. You're going to get a much better, more efficient furnace, um, might give you better heat, quieter, who knows, these things are not that quiet. Um, water heaters, um, like I said, um, the Atwood is no longer available, Dometic bottom. The Dometic tank I like, one of the biggest reasons I like the Dometic water heater tank is because the Atwoods had the heat 
heat, electric heating element on the back side. And sometimes that is such a pain to get to. We've had to take entire cabinetry on an RV. We had an Airstream one time. We had to take the entire bed, cabinets, everything apart just to get to the heating element on the back of a water heater. You can see it, you just can't get your tools on it. Um, so we had to take an entire Airstream bedroom apart just to get to that. Um, so the new Dometic water heaters, they put the heating element on the front. Thank you very much. Uh, so there's all these changes. So, but sometimes the only option you have is to totally replace that entire appliance. Um, um, I'll mention referred air conditioners, okay? It's not that it's air conditioner season, but um, back in, in the early 90s on back, there were pages in the service manual on exactly how to tap and refill your, um, the refrigerant inside of an air conditioner. Almost any RV tech that was an RV tech had the tools, knew how to do it, everything. It was so easy to, to solder on, find the leak, solder on there, tap into it and fix it. Uh, so it's not technically difficult to do that. You can probably get the tools at any auto parts store to do that. But they, they changed the law all of a sudden. And now, in order for you to do that simple, simple thing that in 1994, it's in the service manual. Um, I've got manuals on our website that talk, that it's, it's like an antique document you could read because that's the way they were doing it back then. But um, today, if you don't have the, the license from the EPA and all this fancy equipment and all that kind of stuff, um, by law, you, you can't do this very simple task and recharge, fix the leak and recharge your air conditioner. Um, and if you're doing it and you're caught doing it, you get a fine. Um, so most of your RV technicians, they're just going to replace the air conditioner. Air conditioners, you know, let's just say they're $800. And um, so, and, and that's one of the reasons why on an air conditioner, they don't give you any of the taps. It's not, they don't, the manufacturer does not give you taps as far as the manufacturer is concerned. It's a throwaway item. Once it springs a leak, throw it out, pay 800 bucks, put a new one on there. Um, even though you can fix it. And so the strategy there, sometimes we take it off the roof, give it to the customer. The customer takes it to an HVAC tech that has all the licenses. They make the repairs. They bring it back to us. We put it back on top. Um, but Darren, him, my every works, I'm not going to jump through all the hoops from the EPA to go get licensed to, to do this kind of stuff. I'm just going to give you new air conditioner. Um, so anyway, those are, I could go on with many, many colorful stories. We've done thousands of service calls, but, uh, those are just some of my thoughts right off the top of my head. Okay. Um, that's great. Sometimes you got to get a new appliance. Yeah. <laughs>